thanksgiving for it. In Jesus' name, amen. How many remember Gerardo Rivera? A few of you. Not very many. A few of you remember that. He was a Spanish gentleman. American. He was a, an American journalist. Well, he actually is still uh, active, by the way. Older, much older. An American journalist, a, and he was an attorney. I didn't know that, but he's an attorney as well, knowing the law. An author, he's written several books, and a political commentator. And then for several years, from 1987 until 1998, he had a television show called The Road. Eleven years. Quite popular. The talk show. In 1988, his second year on this 
uh, clothes, or his uh, television talk show. In 1988, and it was hosted by NBC, by the way, in 1988, he gave NBC the highest rated two hour documentary in television history. Pretty amazing, huh? 1988. The highest rated ever documentary on television in the history of television. More people watch that than ever before. You know what his subject was? Satanism in America. That was the documentary. That was the subject with his guests and with his audience and everybody else. Satanism in America, the highest rated documentary in television history. If I ask you to repeat the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer, the Believer's Prayer, you can all do it, I'm sure. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses or sin, just as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from not just evil in general, but deliver us from the evil one. And so we have taken that and used that because we should be praying that and use it to uh, make a, several sermons actually. We identified the evil one as the devil through scripture. And that's where we get our truth from, not the world. We stated point number two that the evil one is a person, a spirit being, not just a system. We said thirdly, is the evil one powerful? And yes, he is. And then fourthly, the one that we're on presently, We'll finish up today. Is the evil one in the world today? One thing to say, oh yeah, we see the devil back there in Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> oh yeah, we see the devil uh, 2,000 years later in Job's realm. Interesting what the Lord asked him. Where have you been? Where are you coming from, Satan? And he answered, from going through the world, through the earth. And backing and walking back and forth in it, certainly in the world, making his circuit to down the affairs of man. And even in time of Christ, he certainly is here in the world. And at the end of Scripture, the history of it, John the Apostle. An old man. But he wrote in 1 John 5 9, the whole world is under the control of the evil one. One thing to say that, but if people want to believe Satan is in and active in the world today, of course the answer is absolutely yes, he is. We've done several quotes from that. It's interesting to see that Rivera, way back there in 1988, was on a subject of Satanism in America. In America. Supposedly, at least back then, a Christian nation. Where else would he be to be? We looked at three reasons of why, or we're looking at. We believe he certainly is in the world today. Number one, we said Satan is deathless. He's immortal, so he's not going to just go away, cease to exist. Angels don't die. 
And number two, we said Satan's final judgment has not come yet. That will be the next point, the last point in this series. But his final judgment has not yet occurred. So the judgment of the cross, where he no longer has dominion over believers who are in Christ. But he certainly is still active in the world today. Get up to the Lord's heart and see that. And the third point, I think we just simply introduced it last week. The last point. Is Satan in the world today? Is Satan's presence and work can be clearly seen in the world today. Satan's work can be clearly seen in the world today. Uh, Dr. Ron Carlson uh, wrote this book. In fact, he's authored many, many books. He's the president of Christian Ministries International. He's lectured in 76 countries around the world, six different continents. He's recognized as probably the foremost authority and lecturer on cults, false religions, false beliefs, and Christian apologetics. He was speaking in the Midwest here in America not too long ago. He's speaking in the Midwest there to a group of policemen and probation officers. And when opening up the discussion, they said to him, and I quote, Ron, what can we do Every weekend, they said, we find dogs and cats and other animals being offered to Satan in cemeteries, in graveyards, with candles and incense. And satanic paraphernalia, cloaks, black robes, pentagrams, emblems, symbols of Satan, the Homa. What can we do? One would think so that would be so true in America, would you? We had the gospel preached for years, and many people have claimed to believe and accept Christ. Churches all over the countryside, but I tell you many churches are closing down and have all over the nation. Baptist growing group of, if you want to call them religious, are the non-religious. The nuns, N-O-N-E-S. We don't have any affiliation with any church, any religion. growing faster than any group in the U.S. Satan's presence and work can be clearly seen in the world today, in America, let alone all over the world. <laughs> it's interesting as I was reading this in Luke chapter 4, Matthew 4 already also records it, but Luke gives a little bit more detail. And it's in the temptation of Christ in the wilderness by the devil. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, and that's a good place to be, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. I'm hungry after one day. <laughs> it was a supernatural thing. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Fulfill your need 
to hunger me. And Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. Moses spoke those words to the Israelites back in Deuteronomy chapter 8. But here's the one I want to look at. The devil led him up to a high place. And he showed him in all, he showed him in an instant. Obviously a supernatural thing. He showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. This is what he says, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to, if you will bow down and worship me. What he has wanted from the beginning, to be God, to be God, to be worshipped. He's got a lot of people doing it. Not only in the world, but in America. A lot of them. It's estimated that there are over 50 million people who are messed in the occult. Satanic worship, spiritism, seances trying to speak to the dead, horoscopes. Or aren't they just innocent? No. Trusting in something like that. Over 50 of all the newspapers, you name one that doesn't contain a horoscope. And people, over 50 million of them look at that every day, not just because, oh, that's kind of funny, you know, or just to see what it is. No, looking for it to see what their day will bring. What should I do today? You want to know God's attitude of that? If you want, you can turn here to Deuteronomy 18. The children of Israel are about ready to come into Canaan, the promised land. Present day Israel, at least part of it. They're on the east side of the Jordan River. Should have had a map up here, but I don't have one. East side of the Jordan River, present day uh, Jordan and Iraq. When they're ready to go west, they're going to cross the Jordan River and they're going to go into present day uh, the West Bank and Israel. And Moses, through the Spirit of God, is instructing them. And God is telling them that the practices of all of these Canaanite groups in here uh, the Jebusites and the Parasites and the Amorites and the Termites. Oh. <laughs> he said, I want you to do like they do. He says in verse 9, chapter 18, Deuteronomy. When you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable. That word is tobiba. To Iba, Hebrew, means hateful, abomination. Don't do that. Strong word. Do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, or who practices divination or sorcery. Half of the movies that are out there, or used to be out there, were dealing with that very thing. <laughs> Interprets omens, engages in witchcraft. And the word witchcraft is where we get our word pharmacy from. Greek. Or cast spells. Or who is a medium? We see some of those in scripture. A medium was called one who had a familiar spirit in the old King James English. A familiar spirit. They were familiar with them. It was a spirit. 
that they were familiar with and it was one that they called upon to impersonate or do whatever needed to be done to pretend they were speaking with or bringing back someone who was dead. familiar spirit, or spiritist, or one who consults the dead. We have a new King James, our old King James, new chromacy. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. That's God's attitude towards it. Satanism, witchcraft, of which there are thousands and thousands of them in uh, the states alone. Openly. Bring it up on your uh, internet. Google it. You get a bunch of them. Back in Luke chapter 4, on the subject is what can be clearly seen in the world today. The devil leads Jesus upon a high place and he shows him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. The scripture clearly teaches that he is in control of the kingdoms of the world. Back then it was Rome. You remember Rome? You watch movies about the gladiators. Killed Christians, men, women, children. Satan in control. When this was written, Rome was in control. But there were other kingdoms in the world China, India, other places, Europe. Satan was in control. And he shows them all to Jesus. He says, I own these. This power has been given to me. God, God's still ultimately in control. And I will give you their glory, their authority, and their splendor if you'll bow down and worship me. He's still trying to get people to do that today. And that's the promises he made for all these kids. You know what was interesting? The what? Those people were saying about all this sacrificing that was going on, and still is today. One of the high days is for doing this sort of thing, sacrificing animals and stuff to Satan, is Halloween. Have you noticed, my wife and I were talking about this some time back, in Halloween. I'm 73. I know I don't look it. Thank you. <laughs> 73. And when we were growing up, we were Christians, of course, but none of us, when we were growing up, we used to go out trick or treating and all that kind of stuff. We used to dress up. Remember doing that when you were younger? Some of us way back when. What do you dress up like? Oh, I, I dressed up like a cowboy, maybe an astronaut. Or something, a clown? That would be very befitting. <laughs> Lots of different things. Look at the world today. What is Halloween today? What do people dress up like? What is the big stuff out there now? I think a big store right over there in uh, Triangle Mall. Hollow Eve or something like that, it's called, and there's all kinds of, what is it? A lot of skeletons, zombies, witches, death, ghosts. That's what you see. It's kind of amazing that the actual Halloween started out as Hallow Eve. It was a religious holy day. Celebrating the saints. And now it's turned into something horrible. 
Satan at work is clearly seen in the world today. The kingdoms of the world are under his control. And we see this going this way. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Look at our world. Look at our nation. World and our nation, even. Spiritually speaking, honoring God or going to God or going away from God. Away. Way away. Way away. in the days of Noah. Jesus said it would be like that in the end times before Christ comes back in Peter. Just like it was in the days of Noah. What was it like? Noah preached for 120 years. How many converts? None! Only his children. Only his three sons and their wives and his wife. None! And God looked at humanity and he saw every evil thing. The imagination of his heart was, was continuous. And it grieved him. And he created him. And he said, I'm going to wipe him off the face of the earth. And he did. Our nation, our world, is not going closer to God and righteousness. They're going farther and farther away. Just as the scripture said they were. It's hard not to become too political when we see what's going on in our country, even. I know of several believers, Christians, true born again believers, in my estimation, who voted for the wrong party. When my daughter was born, I was there. Now, mind you, back in those days, the husband wasn't allowed in there. In there. You all know that if you're older like me. You weren't allowed in there. You had to wait out in the waiting room. And uh, you just had to wait. And finally, the nurse would come in and say, well, you have a boy or you have a daughter or, or your wife's okay or something like that. And give us a little bit of time to you know, straighten everything up and then you could go in and see her. So I had to wait. But the doctor that we had was a great doctor, and uh, he rebelled against that uh, the last time. The first three, I didn't get to see nothing. But with my daughter, the last one, I wanted to get in there, and my wife wanted me to be there too. And the nurse said, well, you can't come in here. You can't do that. And the doctor said, let him come in. For crying out loud, he's the one that, you know, it's his child. It's his wife. There's nothing unfamiliar here. Let him come in. So I, I put on the, all the stuff they scrubbed down and put on the hat and the coats and all that stuff that you gotta wear. And I walked into that, that room, sterile room. There's a doctor, there's a, a, two nurses there. And my wife's there. And uh, on the birthing table, I'm sorry. <laughs> she was there and I, I got up at her hip. And the doctor's right there, and the whole procedure is going on. And you know how, push, push, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, what am I saying here? My daughter came off the birth canal. He caught her and finished helping her come out. She's all pink and red, and then she turned blue. She's a multicolored person. <laughs> she's a little bit blue and stuff. And then she started to cry. Started to cry. And I had to go take her and clean her all up, you know, cut the umbilical and all that kind of stuff. But she was born, and it was the most amazing thing I have ever, I have ever seen. Born and life that was there into the world. Amazing. Miraculous. 
God given. I shall never forget it ever. And you think today that our incoming president and others have made it legal and law that at that moment of birth, when a child is being born, and the mother has said, I don't want it, the doctor can take a pair of scissors and jab it in the back of their head and kill them. At that point, I don't know what you think of President Trump. People don't like him. They hate him. They didn't like him as a person. <coughs> Things that he did are more honoring to God by far. Amen. Amen. The most pro-life president we have ever had. And Ben has already claimed, I will undo everything he has done. And the slaughtering of babies will continue. Tell me Satan isn't at work in our world today. He owns the kingdoms of the world. He influences kings and rulers, presidents, to do his bidding. Persecution of Christians is worldwide and becoming more and more so. And it will be here even more than it is now. Because you are his enemy. Because you honor God. Because you seek to worship the Lord only and follow him. And he will come. Jesus will come. And he'll bring true righteousness and true justice into the world. The latter times, Paul said to Timothy, we read last week, that people will follow seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And that doesn't mean some hokey pokey, ugly, troll looking like demon is going to stand up and teach people. It means that demonic spirit, or which is, gets to follow an angel, an angel that follows Satan, will whisper in the ears of teachers, so called preachers. So called theologians, the false, or other false religions. First Timothy, or excuse me, First Corinthians chapter 10, Paul says in verse 14 that those who are sacrificing to their gods, false gods in all these other places in the world, and even here. Even those who sacrifice Satan. It says they are sacrificing to demons. Check it out. They don't know it. They're sacrificing to demons. Not God. I have a couple of publications here I'd like to quote to you by really, really smart men. Christians. Dr. Ed Henson. Dr. Ed Henson is a professor of Old Testament study and eschatology, which is a study of a prophecy and future events yet. And he is uh, at Liberty University in Virginia. Also, he is the speaker, main speaker on a show he began called The King is Coming, television. He's a prolific writer and a very much in demand conference speaker. Goes all over the nation, especially. He said these words America is at the tipping point. As we begin our 245th year, 
the nation faces its most serious crisis. <coughs> Anti-American forces are attempting to undermine and destroy the very soul of the world's greatest nation. The coverage, the convergence of political extremism, social unrest, pandemic paralysis, and general confusion has left us gasping for breath and groping for solutions. He said, let us begin by examining the root cause of the current chaos. In the 19th century, a Princeton, Princeton theologian, you know, Princeton and Harvard, two of the greatest schools, were founded by Christians and began by Christian education. Now they're completely liberal. A Princeton theologian named Charles Hodge, he was a great, great theologian. He warned that when American education ceased to be distinctively Christian, it would only remain neutral for a while, and then it would ultimately turn decisively anti-Christian. And within a hundred years, his predictions have come true. It began, if you want a beginning time, it's probably before that, but if you want a beginning time, it was 1962, when Madeline Murray O'Hare sued schools, another thing, for allowing prayer in school. How dare her? And one. She ruled prayer out of the public school. Subsequently, even voluntarily, moments of silence were eliminated. We just watched a good movie of it last night. It was a true story. In time, all religious instruction was banned from American public education. Both schools, do you see it? The Gideons used to give out Bibles, remember that? In the fifth grade, I got my first little Bible when I was in fifth grade. I wasn't a Christian, but I thought that was pretty neat. They can't do that now. No Bibles. They could stand out on public property and hold the road and hand out to anyone who may want it. Banned from, from education in school. While students are free to pray privately, <coughs> the absence of God in American public education is now glaringly obvious. And the result is rampant secularization. And you see that. Now notice what he said. The war against America is a result of the spiritual battle for the soul of the nation. This is a spiritual war. It plays out in several areas under the disguise of social justice and political correctness. And that is what we're hearing all the time now. Social justice, political correctness. But make no mistake, he says, make no mistake, it is a covert attack of Satan against the very heart of Christian values. Make no mistake. One other one. This is present day. I don't know if any of you have heard of ID 2020. That's not the old show, you know, with Hugh Downs or anything. ID 2020 is current right now. It is an alliance. In fact, the United Nations, way back in 2015, all the countries of the United Nations, except America, because President Trump pulled out of it, He's not a globalist, he's a patriot. <clears throat> and all these members develop goals for the world, for their country and the whole world. And one was providing legal identity for all, including birth registration by 2030. We've got 10 years. According to the ID 2020 Alliance, they said a unique convergence of trends 
like the pandemic provides an unprecedented opportunity to make a coordinated, concerted push to provide digital ID to everyone. The Alliance makes it clear that, quote, growing political willpower, rising global connectivity, emerging technologies calls for a new model of ID and it's making what's going on in the world today is making it all possible. This alliance includes Accenture, the Rockefeller Foundation, Ideal.org, Microsoft, Gabby, the Gates Foundation, and others. We are witnessing an ideological war waged by various globalist elites. I have seen and listened to some of these guys. Like Soros said, you know, the multi-multi-billionaire. I heard him say with his own mouth, we'll do anything we have to do, anything, in this case, at this situation, to get Trump out. Because see, Trump won't play ball. He won't play ball with him. He's not a globalist. And he told him so. So I hate him. Look at that. Let me quote this right here. We're witnessing an ideological war waged by various globalist elites like billionaire businessman and philanthropist Bill Gates against a rising tide of nationalism in America and around the world. For decades, Gates has funded the development of vaccines, and you're hearing a lot about that right now, for mass global distribution. Today, he is at the forefront also of ID 2020, the forefront of it. A combined effort by the company that he co-founded, Microsoft, and another company that he founded, if you will, Gavi, as I already mentioned, it's called the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. That's what Gavi stands for. And several multinational corporations this is what it says, to implement a mandatory digital identity for every man, woman, and child on planet Earth through the use of biometric technology. Now, I'm not saying anything I'm president, I don't think so, but you see how it's working and coming to that way. The mark of the beast Revelation 13 will be something already coming into existence, the ability for it. If our governor locks us back down and you don't want to wear a mask or you don't want to do this or you don't want to do that, he can say to the store, you can't go in there. You can't shop. You can't do this, you can't do that. That's what it'll be like in the tribulation. Mark of the Beast. But this author goes on to say, and this man's another very, very good biblical author, good, good Christian man. He says, who or what has the power to cause global disruption of such epic proportions? Who has the power to simultaneously implement strategies of this variety and magnitude all over the world? world governments and globalists they believe that they're calling the shots but these developments go beyond the scope of their control listen to what he says skeptics may scoff but in reality these developments are nothing less than the sinister schemes 
of an invisible enemy in a spiritual war between the forces of good and evil. Throughout human history, Satan has used human instruments as pawns on a grand invisible chessboard to accomplish his strategic purposes. And he is doing the same today. Think about it. Think about it. Even in our current history. Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Charisma. Who was his enemies, number one? Not the Allies. God's chosen people, Jews. Murdered millions. Why? Why them? Peace loving. They weren't even in the war. Murdered Jews. Because they're God's chosen earthly people. Satanic. Spiritual war. How about Stalin? Russia killed millions, millions of Christians, believers. Burned Bibles by the carload. Why? Because it's a spiritual war. Satanic. About Nero, even at the time of Paul. Fiddled around my Rome burned, as the adage goes. And then convinced it was Christians that did it. And killed thousands, if not millions, of Christians who've done nothing. Why? It's a satanic war. The devil is in control of the kingdoms of the world. Because God has allowed it for his own purposes and his own will. And he is at the forefront right now with all these things that are going on. You better believe it. No wonder Jesus said, when you pray, say, deliver us from the evil one. We don't have the power ourselves. Now, that isn't just he is a person. But all the work that you can see, if you have your spiritual eyes on and you read the word of God, you can see it. What is going on in the world and in our country. And the joyful noise, uh, news of it is, is that that just shows God's words coming exactly true and we are closer and closer and closer to the coming Christ. Jesus will come back. And the bulk of the world will not be believers. Just like in Noah's day. Just like in Lot's day. The bulk of the world will be following Satan whether they know it or not. But we won't be. Stand up. Resist the devil, the Bible says. Resist it. But be aware. And watch the world around you. Lord God, come quickly. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word and how you teach us and show us in the spiritual world. The world, maybe we can't see it, but it is there. You are real. God is spirit. They that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit beings, including Satan, the spirit, made invisible to our eyes, but certainly very apparent to what is going on. Pray, Lord God, that you give us spiritual vision and sight 
that we can pray effectively, that we will stand for truth, for your word. We will worship only you. We'll not bow the knee to Satan or any one that he has following him, but to you only. We'll be obedient to your word. We're so thankful that you chose us and called us in Christ. That we can be saved, redeemed. And I will pray even now, if anyone is here has never done that, that they will do it now. They will call upon you. Jesus, I believe, you died for my sins. You rose again for my justification. Would you come into my life, my heart, be my Savior? Save me, redeem me. Anyone can do that. You have become a new creation in you. I pray that you will bless your word to our hearing, to our hearts, continuously. We stand for truth and for you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.